You know what? Fall is my favorite time, and that's really just because endless amounts of tech come out. And what better time to upgrade from my OnePlus 10T with the broken camera module than with the awesome announcement from OnePlus, the OnePlus Open. Without further ado, grab your red cable cards if you have them, and let's check this out. So originally set to launch August 29th at the OnePlus New York launch event. Unfortunately, OnePlus did delay the phone to late October because, well, the interior screen, the actual foldable piece of a foldable phone was not up to par and they had to outsource it to Samsung. Now this may sound like it was to the detriment of the phone itself, but it's actually a pretty good move. But let's go into the stats of the phone to see why. So coming in at $1699 and this RP in the US market, this is $100 less than the other flagship foldable phones from Samsung and Google. And I truly believe, at least on paper, this beats them in every other way. The front screen and the interior screens both offer 2800 nits for brightness and HDR, which is the brightest I've seen on a device. It's also the lightest and thinnest foldable phone on the US market. The Voyager Black, which is a vegan leather print, if you so choose, is 239 grams, which makes it the lightest phone on the market for a foldable. Or you can go with the glass back 245 grams, which still makes it one of the lightest foldable devices and rocks the standard OnePlus green that you can see beside me here. Taking a look at the screens themselves, the exterior is 426 pixels per inch, while the interior rocks 431 pixels per inch. It's not the most that we've seen in a flagship phone, but it is plenty to look sharp and crisp when watching movies, uh, looking at social media, or just playing games on the device itself. Now the Open only comes with one set of specs, which is, in my opinion, completely fine. It's 512 gigs of storage, it's 16 gigs of super fast RAM, and it's a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is a top tier CPU for any mobile device. Now, of course, when you're talking about a mobile device, you have to talk about all of those professional photographers with their cell phones, and that means we need to talk about this massive camera bump on the back of the phone. This is still a Hasselblad circle here with three different lenses on it, it has a 48 megapixel wide angle lens, a 64 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 48 megapixel ultra wide lens. So it is the best lenses that you will find on any of the foldable devices out there. I'm guessing because of this massive bump, they've been able to keep the hardware that you will see on the other devices like the 11 and maybe someday the 12 when it launches. Of course, when anybody talks about OnePlus, they're talking about its charging capabilities and how fast it is with the dual batteries in there and the ultra chargers that they ship with. And it comes with a 67 watt block inside of the US, which charges from zero to 100% in roughly 42 minutes. It's not the fastest of the phones, but it is plenty. That of course means it does not offer wireless charging, which has been a disappointment. And some of those internet engineers out there saying that wireless charging takes up no extra space or any extra hardware. Uh, well, I can assume that they were going for the thinnest, the best, the lightest, and that's why they opted not to have the wireless charging in the first gen. Now that we have the paper specs out of the way, let's talk about what this phone has done really well. And of course, that's talking about open canvas. So this phone, comes with Oxygen OS 13.2 and clearly operates as a standard phone. But where it really starts to show itself is when you go into tablet mode, see how quick and seamless that was. I can take any app and open it up and you would experience it like you would think in a tablet. Now where Open Canvas comes in, I can open up a secondary app. So let's just bring in Google Fit here and I can click and drag it to one or the other sides. Drop it. I get these little bars at the top, I can move them around. If I tap them, I can choose to expand them, switch them out for a different app, uh, or I can make it just full screen. So if I expand it, you can see I get an optional third section here. And so this counts as one, this app is counting as two. I can choose to shrink this back down, and then I can open up, let's open up another app in this mix. Um, let's just do DoorDash. And we open that up, we can drag it to the bottom here and I get three different sections where I can clearly switch between my apps or click and drag them around as needed. So this multitasking experience is really awesome being able to look at maybe a Facebook feed or something like that, messaging, YouTube videos, all at the same time and they all keep playing even when they're shifted off to the side. So a really neat multitasking feature. 
that I would love to see come to the actual one pad that I also own. Also, you'll note here that we have a taskbar, so that's where all of this is coming from. I can click and hold, it disappears. And if I can find the right spot, I can click and hold and it comes back. So nice innovation to be able to easily bring some of your recent files or applications quickly to the uh, to within reach, but then be able to push them out of the way to then go back to enjoying a tablet functionality. Now, while we have that screen open, if I just open up a somewhat dark application to try and see the crease, and then if I try to open up another brighter app to do the same, as you can see with some Samsung hard drives I was looking at at one point, uh, you can see that it's not very present there. Now, if you run your finger over it, you can kind of feel it. You're not supposed to push on the crease, but overall, I thought I would see it all the time. I never see it. It is one of the least visible creases out of all the flagship foldables that are currently out there, but this is phenomenal. You just really don't see it unless you are looking for it as hard as you can. And when you're talking the crease, you gotta talk about the hinge. Now, a lot of the hinges are complex, but they serve a purpose of obviously holding the phone open or closed, as well as keeping dust and other particles out of there. One plus, they have 69 parts, noise, to keep this hinge together, which is one of the least complex hinges on the flagship market. You can open it just about past 45 degrees and it will stay open at any level you have it open at until about 120 degrees or so, where it then starts to open the rest of the way to the 180. You can also close it and according to OnePlus, hold a piece of paper in between it and hold it by that. And so it is a pretty tight clasp and you're not worried about it rattling over time. So I'm very pleased with how the hinge has performed so far. Um, I don't see myself using the phone in like a half setup a lot, but it's nice to know that it could if I wanted to. Now on the side of the phone, we have some of the similarities that we see on the other OnePlus devices. There's a notification slider. So that is back finally. It was gone for a little bit. Here it is. And uh, I will have to get back in the habit of using it because I finally got in the habit of not having one. And then we have the volume rocker and the power button that seconds as a fingerprint unlock. And I have found this to be very responsive no matter the angle that I'm trying to unlock. Others have said that it's been finicky. Honestly, maybe they didn't train their fingerprints well because it's unlocking too often for me. Sometimes trying to do this presentation, it's been unlocking, but it works really well and I'm very pleased with it. Now the camera is pretty good for a phone. I can't really compare it to a ton of other devices, but I'm pleased with the quality of it. Comparative to my 10T, side by side, the OnePlus Open definitely outplays it. And that's probably in part because of the Hasselblad sensors comparative to the 10T, which did not have those. So I'm very pleased with how the camera performs, even from a tracking perspective. Lastly, for those of you who are gaming enthusiasts, I was pleased with the size of the screen. I was a little disappointed, at least in Call of Duty Mobile, I couldn't control which way the aspect was. So I did have to tilt the screen in a direction that I didn't think I would have to. So OnePlus clearly knew going into this that at some point you will be blocking at least one of those speakers based on the orientation. And so they have three speakers that support Atmos and they sound just fine for a mobile device, clearly not made specifically for gaming. So they're not gonna be in the top 5% or so, but they sound pretty good for what they are. So where does this phone really need to improve? And I'm gonna start with the most simple. It does ship with a I guess we can call this a case. It's supposed to match the color. So again, I got the vegan black here. So it's supposed to match. They look identical. Uh, it's a very flimsy, cheap plastic that's supposed to act as a bumper guard. And yes, that goes on there. Yes, it kind of supports or protects the side, but the front piece is the one I had the problem with. It's really flimsy piece of plastic, makes it look like trash. It's hard to use the edges of the phone afterwards, and it doesn't really seem to give any real protection. I mean, my hinge is basically completely exposed to any sort of fall, so that's a concern to me. And this flimsy little plastic just basically kind of like sits floating on there. So I was hoping that they would have a better camera case. They have a secondary case that's supposed to launch a month after the phone. And even that just looks like it's the same exact case with a kickstand and they have some tempered glass. So. I'm thinking they're saying tempered glass is really the best thing you can do to protect this. So I will be picking up some sort of screen protection once I can. Along with protection, you have to talk about the water resistance. Most flagship phones have something better than what this offers, which is IPX4. So it's resistant to water splashes from any direction. 
and they do show a video of it being continuously squirted with water and still functioning. So I'm curious on if OnePlus thought that they should have been rated higher than what they actually achieved, but it's a little disappointing to only see IPX4 for such an expensive device. And circling back to the wireless charging, I would like to see that it is a flagship feature, but I can kind of understand why they were going for the, the thinnest, the, the lightest, the etc. I mean, all of the amusement parks do the same thing, the highest, the fastest, the whatever, but you have to give something up to achieve that. And so OnePlus chose to give up wireless charging, but I would like to see that in the second gen. Lastly, the phone feels bulky in my hands. So it is the lightest foldable device in North America, but that does not mean it is a light device by any means. It feels like a double wide phone. Uh, in fact, I compare it to my very first smartphone, the Verizon XV6700. I mean, that thing had a slide out keyboard, it had a stylus in the antenna, and that thing was a brick. While this thing feels heavy folded, I will give it to them that the weight disperses pretty well once you open it up and it no longer really feels heavy in your hand. So what are my actual thoughts on this phone after using it for a little while? I think it's a very performant phone. I think that they really amped up the CPU and the memory in it and it's going to stay a snappy phone throughout its life. That said, there are some niceties that they should bring to it. I do feel like the buttons are a little too high to use even with my hands. I feel like the camera bump is a little overdoing it. It gets in the way with how I typically hold a phone. And I'm really concerned about the overall durability of the phone. The front screen, the sides here, if I drop it, what's the type of protection? And then it gets even more concerning once it's open if it drops. If a gust of wind catches this when I'm holding it with a singular hand, what happens to the device? So we can only see with time on how this thing holds up, especially with me having kids, a dog, and travel for work but I'm hoping this at least gets me to the next device and maybe even a better OnePlus foldable device in the near future. Now it's gonna be an important thing to understand that this will not be a phone for your parents. It is meant for power users. It's not gonna be for your parents, your grandparents. And if you don't think you're gonna be multitasking in the near future and mostly use this thing open with multiple apps running, don't buy it. Get the 11, it's less than half the price. It has basically the same specs on paper and you will be a lot more pleased with the experience. In fact, my wife is sending back her open to get the 11 just because it was not for her. Now me, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to see if I will continue to enjoy the foldable experience or if you will see me on a OnePlus 12 or some other device in the near future. With that said, this is really not a review of just the OnePlus Open. It is a review of all foldable devices because it is a different experience than your standard cell phone here. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you think you will be picking up one of the foldable devices, which one you have, what your experience is with the OnePlus Open, and I will be sure to let you know how my experience is going in you know, the future, a couple months from now, with the durability and all of the other concerns about the phone itself. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content that I may feature on this channel. And until next time, I'm Chris from Code the Things.